What's up guys, I'm Pause Build, and welcome back to our Ethical Zoo franchise series in Planet Zoo. In the previous video, we added in the black rhino to our zoo, which is such a cool animal to finally have, and we can work on the conservation of the species. But in this video, I wanna take a focus on our guest education and really teach them about the animals that we have in the zoo. And crucially, I really wanna see one of our educators handle one of our exhibit animals. So we're definitely gonna be doing that. We've, uh, we've done quite a lot to improve our education. We do need to add the same for all the Oceania. Uh, habitat. Although I think we're going to struggle to put in actual seating for these. So I'm going to put a an education talk in here for the little the little penguins. And I'm going to... There's no seating to link, sorry. I'm going to put them on the little penguins. And this doesn't have power. Right, where's the power? Ooh, okay. I'm going to move the talk around to this side then, where there's power. And then we're going to set this. The last one's in September. Let's put this in November. And then they've got December and then January. So it should link up absolutely fine for them. Um, and we can put it into the work zone and our educator will get cracking on it. Now, I'm going to put them in there. We are going to add more in too. So perhaps we should also put another animal education point on over here. Is there power here? There is. Let's put one over here for a talk on the platypus. And again, we'll add that into the same work zone. Um, this one should probably start a different time of year. I'm just thinking about when we want to do these. We're going to have the platypus and then all of these. So let's... Oh, I'm going to pause. The emu are fighting because of overcrowding. This one needs to start in January as well. And I'm going to hire another educator to get cracking on that. We can add them into the work zone. So they know they're on the central hub too. And we'll have two educators on the central hub. Let's just pay to upgrade all our staff again whenever we can. Um, oh yes, but we have dangerous fighting due to overcrowding. So the emus are overcrowded now. Oh, we're going to call the vet. Oh my goodness, I would not want to be involved in this fight. Okay, this is an outsider now. Let's release them into the wild. I'll stop the fight in its tracks. And then we need to probably have a look at who is in here. There's a young adult here, so I think this young adult needs to be released into the wild along with the baby of that's grown up, the female that's grown up um, of Rocky, because we don't want her breeding with Rocky either. So release both of them into the wild. That should resolve that issue. Phew. <laughs> and then we want to put our education around here. Now, there we're going to struggle on this side for space, so I'm going to add in one education talk over here to talk about the uh, the quokka. Let's link that up. And we're going to add that into our work zone too. And this one is going to be set to talk in March. There we go. It's already on there. We've got our redneck wallabies around here. Now I'm going to put talk here. And we are going to have some seating for this one. And I'm going to link this. This one is going to be on the redneck wallab the uh, redneck wallabies in May. And then we're going to have the same thing over here with the emu. Uh, we're going to have education talk here. And this is going to be on the emu. And that is going to be another two months later. So that's going to be... Oh, we're going to give them a couple... Should we give them a couple of months? Yeah, let's give them a couple of months again. And bring them back. Give them a few months and bring them back in September for this one. And the final one over here is the red kangaroo. And this isn't going to have anyone, uh, any any seating or anything. So we'll put the red kangaroo in November around here. Now we can add all of these to the work zones. And then we need to put in some seating for the, uh, the emu and the redneck wallaby education talks.
okay, I feel like that's good. We've got like a, uh, there's a painting. So I'm assuming this, we, for the purposes of this, we're saying this is like some kind of hard, hard material, I don't know. That uh, that's still durable enough to. Oh, I can just see here. Actually, it's not quite aligned in, which is really annoying me. Uh, let's move that one there. I don't think it's ever going to be fully aligned. Honestly, actually, I'm going to let it go. Um, I am going to slide it slightly forward though, um, because I want it to be more this way. I have a bit more of an overhang that way. There we go. I think that's good. I'm happy with that. Um, but th this is just, I'm just going to say this is some kind of material that we've, we've acquired that's uh, it's a bit interesting. And, you know, and then we painted it. I like this, though. I think it's cool. We've got some, you know, some kind of wood chip material or something that we've then painted the top of. And it looks really nice. I think that looks, that's quite funky. <laughs> so I like that. We're going to use be using this one. Uh, and I'm going to do the same over here for this habitat, this uh, this education stand, and then I will uh, link it all up so it actually functions. There we go. I'm pretty happy with that. That's all in. That looks good. Okay, now we can link them up. Let's grab this link seating. And we've got a nice shaded uh, seat area for our guests to uh, enjoy the enjoy the educational talk. There we go. I like that. Um, they should be working. And we've got two educators on the case, so they should be able to divide the work between them. And uh, essentially, yeah, it's divided up. So one of them does all of this and one of them does all of this. We could split that out so that we have it very prescriptively told to them that's exactly what they do but i'm sure the ai will be fine in managing that itself and, and seeing who's available and like who's closest as well and, and and work it out if it is a problem though we can uh, we can always change it in the future anyway so it's not it's not a big issue look at our beautiful little striped hyena oh that's so cute now you guys actually mentioned that i hadn't checked the zoopedia properly when i was putting in the hyena and the striped hyena has a different group size than the spotted hyena. So you can see here, yeah, it's one to seven. So up to six males and one female. So it's not um, it's not a two female group. Whereas the spotted hyena is a group of up to two males and up to two females. So the striped hyena should have more males and only one female. So this is why there was one that kept being an outsider. I don't know why sometimes it was saying that it was in the group though, and sometimes it was an outsider. That was a bit odd. But uh, yes, that's the problem we have here. Now, if I pause the game, we've got a couple of little babies, which I didn't realize. <gasps> Look at them. <gasps> Aren't they so cute? Oh, they're adorable. Okay, uh, but we do still have an outsider. So let's grab the female who's outside the gender ratio. So this is the one that's not the alpha female. And we'll send her to the trade center where we decide what we're gonna do with her. And then to be honest, we've got a couple of males in here. We could get another male, but this group seems quite happy. They've already got a couple of babies. So there's gonna be four males. I think we're okay. Um, we could leave them as they are, or I tell you what, let's get, let's get a, let's have a look at what we've got in the market and see see what there is. There's one male here. Oh, he's actually quite good. Okay, let's grab this male and then we'll send him to the to the zoo as well. Let's send him to the quarantine over here to check for any diseases or injuries before he goes into the zoo. And then we'll put him in as well. And then there's at least three males in there and one female and two cub males now. Are they cubs? I don't know what they'll be called, the babies. Let me know in the comments. What's a baby hyena called? <laughs> um, however, we have our this hyena here, which we can only quick trade because she's not from... Um, she's we, we bought her for cash. So we're going to have to basically trade her to another zoo. Um, so we'll do that, though. I'd rather release animals to the wild, but this is just a mechanism in the game which you can't do. So you can't, like, farm credits by buying them for money and, and uh, releasing them for credits. So, um, there we are. That, that is what it is. 
However, I think that should have resolved our problems here. Now, one other thing I've missed is we haven't renamed our aardvarks or our meerkats. So I think we'll go through now and do a little bit of naming for these guys. Just so they, uh... oh look, this is a baby. <gasps> There's babies everywhere. Look at them. Oh, the little faces. I feel like they, they need to grow into their nose. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's do some renaming, starting with this little one. Seeing as this is one of the suggestions and they're playing with them, let's call this little one Bubbles, because that's really cute. Then we're going to have Liani. And the male aardvark is sleeping underground, so we're going to call him Arthur. And you can see him if we go into our habitat camera here. There he is, just having a little snooze, because it is the daytime, so it's not really time for him to be up. And we've got baby meerkats as well. Oh, look at them. They're so little. Oh. Their, their running animation is very weird. <laughs> They're so cute. Oh, very cute. Okay, let's rename all of these meerkats. So it looks like we've got four meerkats in here. So let's call... Obviously, we need a male called Timon. That's just a given. <laughs> then we've got some others in here. So let's, let's call them... Pip, Chipper, and Pookie. And we can have a look at all of them in the habitat camera. Look at them, they're all just sleeping away. It's like the, the change of shift, because it's, like, it's just changed from night to day. So some of them are awake, some of them on, and same with the odd box. This one's gonna be called Flower. And then we're gonna have Potato, Spots, Draco, Lumos, which is our alpha female. And then we can we might as well have Nox. And we can have Nelly. Dolly. And finally, Watcher. Who's running away? <laughs> probably he's probably seen something. <laughs> oh, he's seen the keeper with the food. There we go. And our striped hyena is ready to release. So let's put them into the striped hyena habitat. And they will integrate into the group. So that's good. Also, we haven't done any education for our black rhinos. Oh, I think I just saw something. Yeah, that's a little bit broken, isn't it? Let's uh, let's put the maintenance on this to be every six months. I don't know why it was on every year. That never works. <laughs> Same with these, they should be on every six months. I wish I could set that to the default because I feel like it just, if you leave all of them on a year, it must be to do with how many things you connect to it as to how quickly they run down. But a year is just never long enough. I always end up needing to uh, to shorten it. But anyway, let's, um, we've had more capybara babies. That's so many capybara. <laughs> right, let's put some education in for our black rhino and uh, some donation bins. And hopefully these guys can start bringing us in some money because look how cute they are. Play with the sprinkler. Okay, we just put in some lights, some bins, some donation bins, and some education. So that should be good. Other than the education talks, we haven't put any of those in. Um, but we'll probably cover that off in an area when we do all of them, which we could do next. However, I do just want to go through and take out some of these Australia lights. Because now we put these lights in, I feel like there's just too many of these in here. So I'm probably just going to delete every other um, Australia light we have and see how that looks when we go around. Um, because there's just too many lights on this habitat, I think. There we go. I think that's a bit better, isn't it? Um, we've still got lights along here, so I think that's pretty good. Everywhere's pretty well lit. 
Now we do need to do our education and I'd like to put in some talks like we have here for the, uh, the Oceania animals and over here for the South America animals. And I wanna do these for the African animals, except we don't have a lot of space. So we're gonna have to see what we're able to do with the space that we have. Um, it may not be enough space for seats everywhere, but we can definitely still put some talks in. So I'm gonna start doing that now. And our Africa section kind of starts over here with the meerkats and aardvarks. So I'm gonna put the first one in over here. Now where the habitat lines up, I just feel like it's better to put them all as talk stands rather than make seating because the closest seating we get is over here and that's a long way for our educators to walk just for this habitat when they can also do the talk just here. So I just think it doesn't really make much sense. Let's keep them all in a smaller area where they'll be more efficient and more likely to actually make it to these talks on time. So let's start the first one off in January. Then we'll put the next one for March. Then we can do the cheetahs in... Uh, May then we'll give them a bit of a break and then they can come over and do if we give them a break for June July August maybe they kick this one off in September Ooh, we need to be careful with how many we've got on here maybe we'll do this in August and then we'll have this one be October and then the black rhino in December which is over here. Let's have this one. Oh, we can't have December because we're kicking off in January. We need this one to be November. So we may not be able to give them a break in the middle, actually. We may just have to kick off straight into each one. I mean, they've got time between to move, move uh, between talks. They've got a month between each of them. So this one's going to be July. This one's going to be September. And then the Black Rhino in November. And then there's there's a month between all of them. But an educator should be able to get to all of them still. I just like to give them a bit of like downtime between. I'm not really sure if they actually need it. <laughs> it's just something that I do. But we could always in the future move this so that this is one section. And then when we have more Africa animals, there can be a new section here. And we could even have the educator stuff down here. But for now, I think this is a good solution. Well, for the number of animals we have, I think this works. So I'm just going to add all of these into the work zone for the Africa work zone. And now that added in, an educator will go to them if we have one. So let's hire an educator. And we can assign them to the Africa work zone. And now they will... Uh, they'll start doing talks on there, which was hopefully just improved our education. We also have a very ugly staff building here, which I think I'm going to spruce up now to make it a little bit nicer. Okay, I quite like that. I think we're pretty good there. And uh, I mean, it's a bit of an unusual building, but it does the job and it's a bit more interesting than what we had before. Or we could maybe move some of the decorations we have over here across as well. Just have similar ones. Um, just put it on a line to surface here and take off random rotation so we don't get these weird angles. But I'm not looking to do too much to this because I think it's kind of okay as it is. Let's maybe just have like a couple of these here and then one of these in the middle. Something like that is probably good. Um, and maybe then an awning as well, like we've got here. We'd just keep it more in theme. 
and also be a bit practical for the uh, the actual people using it, I suppose. <laughs> but yeah, I'm quite happy with that. I think that gives us a bit of something and uh, makes it a bit more interesting over here. So let's leave that as it is. We've got our education sorted over here. We've got our education sorted for all of our animals now, I believe. I think they all have talks, except for our little guys in here. Our... Ooh, those toilets look stinky. <laughs> Let's uh, let's call the caretaker urgently for that because that does not look good. Um, well, they're right there. We've got animal welfare. Oh, it's these. The uh, I think the keepers training up, aren't they? Because we just got a new one. So let's let's go into our staff, grab all of our staff, and train everyone up. I I believe there's a couple of keepers. Yeah, there's a couple of keepers here who aren't fully trained up. So. We'll just get them to max and then that'll be much better for everyone. However, I think it's a good time to add in our education inside this building. So I'm going to put a uh, education talks around for the different, um, the different exhibits we have. So we've got our five in here and then I'm going to go in and assign them. So this is for the green iguana. It's too large for the educators to handle because they handle them, which I completely forgotten. And so you guys reminded me in the comments. So thank you for that. Um, however, yes, they're too large to handle. So they won't pick up the green iguana, but they can still do a talk on them and educate our guests about them. So let's have the boa constrictor in March. Too large to handle. I think some of them are a little too dangerous to handle as well. However, they will handle some of them. Western, yeah, okay. The Western Diamondback Rattlesnake is too dangerous to handle. There we go. Um... Put them on May. What about the snails? Did they get the snails out? There we go. They get, they'll handle the snails. We need to see at least one of them because these are so cool. Um, right. And then we'll have the puff adder. I imagine too dangerous. Yes. So then we'll have them in... I tell you what, why don't we have... Oh, we'll have September and then we'll have the last one. They can do the bats as well. Or we could split this up, actually. I think what we'll do is we'll have a bit of a break. We'll have these guys in November and we'll have the land snails. Well, I'm going to pause because we've attracted protesters. I'm going to have the land snails in September. So we've got November and September. And then they've got a bit of a break from May. They've got June, July, August. They've got three months in the middle to have a bit of a break, go to the staff room or whatever they need to do. Oh no, we've got an insane amount of, we've got over, we've got fighting due to overcrowding because we have an insane amount of capybara again. Let's just go through and have a look at all these animals in here. Now the tapers are fine. They've got one of each and a baby. Then we've got the giant anteaters. They're also fine, one of each and a baby. We've got the main wolf is just the baby right now. We do need to get a male for these and we're gonna wait until they grow up before we add a male into the habitat. And then the capybara, just an obscene amount of them. <laughs> okay, so straight away we could just release any that are outsiders. I think these are listed in order of age anyway. When you come up here, I think this is at the top. We've got our adults, yeah. So I'm gonna leave in a few, none of them, I'm gonna release all the males because apart from our new male, because none of them should be related to, we don't want any of them to be related to the females that they'll breed with. Now Raul is our new male, we do need to rename him. I'm um, gonna release all the, the males and then probably a good amount of the females just so we don't have an insane number here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine females and one male is probably enough. In fact, let's release another female. And then we've got a, a number of babies as well. If we release all of these to the wild, we get 52 credits. Oh, that's just for two. Why is that? Let's send them all to the trade center. And then we should have, there you go, quite a lot in here. If we, if we select all, Ah, I don't think we can release all of them. Let's... Release these to the wild. And then we've got a few here. We can't release this one here. Ah, it's because he's a young adult. I grabbed by mistake. Right, let's release these to the wild. And then we can put 
this poor little this poor little young adult back in here. That was just an accident. <laughs> okay. The cleanliness is the disease risk too. We need to call the keeper. I think they're probably here already. I thought I just saw them. Oh, that's the vet. The keeper will be here soon. It's just that we've got a, a lot of. We could, to be honest, we could get another keeper for this work zone. Let's uh, let's see what our finances are like. We're still making a lot of money. I think we hire another keeper. Seeing as this series is about an ethical zoo, we want it to all be as ethical as possible. Yeah. Let, let, let's get another keeper in here. And where are they? No work zone. Central hub. And we can put them to... Oh, they can't train up yet anyway. Oh, no. They've got a diseased capybara. Well, at least our vet's here. Let's call the vet again. I assume they're already here. There we go, vets here. Well, that's not good. We don't want them to have diseases. It's probably because of a cleanliness risk because the keeper's not cleaned up any poop. So please do that. <laughs> They're reporting the incident about the disease. But what we really need is for them to uh, to clean up all the poop for everyone. Because there's quite a lot of poop in this one. Oh my goodness, we've got a little baby spotted hyena. How cute are they? <laughs> That, that laugh thing is so weird, isn't it? <laughs> right, well, we should rename our hyena. I think we've got a, another few babies in here. Because this is too many. Yeah, I think we've... I think is this one a little baby as well? Yeah, there's another little baby. Oh, it's adorable. Right, well, we need to rename them. So renaming our hyena, we've got our alpha female here. She is going to be called Shenzi. <laughs> then we're going to have Banzai. And Eddie. Hopefully you guys know what this is from, but I think it's a really cool suggestion. And then the last uh, adult we'll call Giggles because of the, the sound they make, which I think is really cute. And for this little bubba, we'll call her Dot. And this one, Humorous, which I think is funny. Now for our striped hyena, we're going to have Yoshi or Yoshi. I don't really know how you pronounce it, but from Mario. <laughs> uh, we could also have Stripe who's the gremlin, the mean gremlin in Gremlins. Then we're going to have Wilfred. We're going to have Harold. We're going to have Jasmine. And the last one is going to be Harley. And for our black rhinos, we're going to have Ringo and Riley, which is cute because they're like rhino names. I'll begin with R. <laughs> and also Riley's pregnant. Which is awesome. We're going to have a baby in February of next year. That's a long time, but we can wait. We can definitely wait. Now back to the education that I almost forgot about. <laughs> We're going to link these all into the work zone. So I'm going to add the central hub. Oh, I can click through the building. That's helpful. I'm going to go for all five of these. And they should be added in. And now we just need to get another educator and put them into the central hub so they can choose where they're, what they're doing. We could break it up a little bit further. Um, we could have our own work zones just for education as well if we wanted to. But I, hopefully this is, this is good enough. And uh, when is this one? I want to make sure we're here for this one. September. Okay. That's not long. We're in July. So it's only a couple of months. Right. I'm going to add in the education for the others now gonna put an animal talk point in here for the bats uh these are going to be why was the emu first uh it's like through the wall uh okay this is gonna be january we're gonna have another one here and this is going to be for the puff uh, the common death adder and this is gonna be in march then we've got two more so i'm just gonna probably break it up a bit more um have given them a bit of break in the middle we're gonna have the Eastern Blue Tongue Lizard in, let's say, August. Give them a bit of a break. And then this uh, this isn't going to be the Common Death Adder. The Eastern Brown Snake in October. And that should be good. That's all of them covered. Now we need to add all of these into the work zone as well. And hire yet another educator. But I think... Oh, I keep accidentally clicking. There we go. Um, if you select it again, it deselects something. So I just deselected the entire habitat when I dragged instead of just clicking. 
Okay, I'm gonna pause because we're almost in September. Um, I've just selected all of these and then we're gonna have another educator that is gonna come in and do the central hub. This is quite a lot of educators we've got, but I do think it's important. That's kind of, you know, the point of the zoo is to educate people on animals and keep them safe and breed them. So that's what we're gonna be doing now. Please say, yes, there is an educator over here. He is swarmed by people, but hopefully we can see him take out a land snail. <gasps> there he is, he's got one. Oh my goodness, look at him. That's so cool. Oh my goodness, look, he's got one. You can see him holding it. Oh, that is awesome. Oh, I love this. This is so cool. So that's a great little feature they've added. I uh, I really appreciate that. So now we've improved our guest education and we've got to see our educators handle one of the animals, which I think is so cool. I think that's probably all we're going to do for this episode. If you've liked this video, please give it a like. It really helps the channel out and I'll see you in the next one.